Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is Chad Erickson, and I'm the Vice President of Strategy at Advice Media. And today I am uh, very excited to, to welcome our friends from Modernizing, Modernizing Medicine who are uh, going to put, uh, well, they're going to present some amazing information to you. I've had a chance to, to review what they've put together with them, and there's a lot of thought that's gone into this. We also have really an all-star team today, and I'll introduce our, our presenters in just a minute. Uh, for those of you who are are here for the first time, we uh, we welcome you. We uh, the way that we're going to have our format today is is invite you on our control panel to ask questions. Uh, we will uh, I'll be moderating those questions along with um, with uh, Carlos Nieves, who's uh, from uh, Modernizing Medicine well, and uh, working those with with Dr. Michael Rivers. And so go ahead and ask those at any time, but we're going to hold those questions until the end. Also, um, during the presentation, we have a couple of, of spots where we are going to ask some questions. And we invite you during that time to please participate. It helps us understand a little bit better. First of all, if, if you're actually still paying attention, um, but, but it actually just helps us to, to know kind of where to, to uh, direct things and, and helps us understand where where we might meet, meet your needs better. So we appreciate your help on that as well. Also, uh, this is being recorded. And so what we found in the past is that there are many who uh, they, they listen, they wanna hear it again, or they're like, oh my gosh, that was amazing. I wanna share it with others in my practice. So we're going to give you an opportunity to do that. It will, uh, will be there for you. And, and you'll receive a copy of that automatically. It will be emailed out to you, the, the link will be emailed to you tomorrow. Uh, around uh, noon mountain time to eastern time so look for that to come out in, in your email but uh, getting started it's my uh, my pleasure today to welcome our three presenters Dr. Michael Rivers, Ms. Chrisanne Philhouse and Ms. Celine Kaiser. Dr. Michael Rivers is the director of ophthalmology um, he helps modernizing medicine evolve the ophthalm ophthalmology platform by combining his years of experience as a board-certified ophthalmologist and retina surgeon with his expertise implementing and using the EMA EHR system at the Retina Group of Washington. Michael was a practicing ophthalmologist, partner, and board member at RGW in Washington, D.C. from 1991 until 2017. In addition, he was a surgical retina and vitreous fellow at the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics from 1989 to 1991. Ms. Chrisanne Fieldhouse is the Vice President of Product Management at Modernizing Medicine. Chrisanne has been with the organization for over 13 years with a primary focus on practice management and operations. She currently leads strategic efforts to further develop Modernizing Medicine's practice management and analytic solutions to help bring operational improvements to the specialty healthcare markets. Chrisanne's, Chrisanne's past experience includes managing EHR implementation teams. She previously served as a product manager of Modernizing Medicines, Gastroenterologies, formerly GMED, Practice Management Solution. So she oversaw the Gastroenterology RCM division, which has directly contributed to her current role. And last but not least, um, Ms. Celine Kaiser, who is the Vice President of Payments at Mod Modernizing Medicine. Celine joined the healthcare technology company in, the, in early 2019 to oversee the Modernizing Medicine's payment and commerce initiatives with ModMed Pay. A seasoned professional, Celine has 20 years of international experience in technology and payment with pre previous expertise in the telecom, travel, hospitality, and retail verticals. Celine held uh, roles in product, mar product marketing, management, consulting, and business process management at Amadeus, uh, Capgemini, or Orange, and Ernst Young, uh, Ernst and Young, and she holds a BS in nuclear physics from the university. University, I can't even speak French, Celine. I apologize. Uh, Blase Pascal in France, and an MS in physics from the Institut Polytechnique de Grenoble in France. And uh, without further ado, Dr. Rivers, I'll turn the time to you, and then I'll let you run it from here. Chad, thank you very much for that lengthy introduction. I assure the audience that we've got much more interesting things to talk about than the three of us. 
Um, yeah, that that I do true, but I do want them to know they've got an all-star cast here today, well, and well, uh, so really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, I do have a little bit of legal work to do first, and then I'll be giving you an overview of today's program. The materials and other information included in the following presentation are provided as of the date of this webinar on July 16th, 2020, unless specifically noted, and may be subject to change. Modernizing Medicine has no obligation to provide updates to the information provided. Updates and details on the topics covered herein may be available from CMS, CDC, NIH, the SBA, commercial payers with which you contract, and other third parties. Modernizing Medicine and the presenters make no warranty regarding the accuracy or completeness of the information provided. This presentation is intended for informational purposes only and does not constitute financial, legal, medical, or consulting advice. Please consult with your legal counsel or other qualified advisor to ensure compliance with applicable laws, regulations, and standards. In addition, it is each provider's responsibility to determine that any telemedicine visit meets medical necessity for that patient. Not all clinical scenarios may be appropriate for telemedicine visits, and the provider may need to evaluate the patient in person to establish a diagnosis or initiate treatment. Now that that's done, let's talk about the fun stuff. Um, we have four major sections today, and the first is that I'm gonna just give a recap of where we are today. Um, the short answer is chaos. I'm gonna develop that a little bit more. I'd then like to introduce you all to our company, Modernizing Medicine, which is 10 years old, and our specific ophthalmology solutions. I'll then be turning over the webinar to Chris Ann, who is going to talk about managing patient flow, especially in these trying times when you actually don't want to have face-to-face -face time with the patient, you'd like to do it remotely. And then the very last section, we're gonna talk about how our system allows you to simplify patient payments. Also incredibly important in these trying times, where payments may be more of a challenge if you don't have that opportunity to check patients out and ask them for co-pays. Now, I won't read all of these, but we all know that this is an amazingly chaotic time. I helped run a medical practice for many years, and I can't imagine how difficult it is. Even week by week, recommendations from the state, recommendations from the federal government change. Our patients are scared. Doctors are scared. Your staff is scared. This quote sums it up for me. This is the first time since I opened my practice in 1987 that the practice was not able to maintain solvency without outside financial report support. Excuse me. I think that pretty much says it all. The other aspect that's incredibly important, as you all realize, is how do your patients feel? And there's a continuum. You've got patients that are at one end reckless and are uninformed, and you've got others that are so scared they, they won't come in, even in the face of, of blindness. And unfortunately, this can change day by day and week by week. COVID-19 is nothing anyone, any of us have ever experienced. So it's incredibly important to have a patient experience so that patients feel comfortable and safe. Education is also a critical aspect of taking care of patients. And in addition, how do we currently address patient, employee, and personal safety to return to the previous patient volumes? I show this slide only because nobody really knows what's going on. These are obviously projections. The projections change. We may have more virus. We may have less virus. We may have a period where patients want to come in. We may have another period where the ASC is shut again and, and patients aren't coming anywhere near your office and you have to go in a full on telemedicine mode. This is such an unknown that what we'd like to do is deliver a service to you that helps you communicate and engage with your patients. Our concept is to deliver contactless care. 
when patients come into the office and they speak to a front desk person, that's risky not only for the patients, but for your staff. And what we're hoping to show you today is that there are digital tools that can limit physical contact and that some of these tools can help your workflows become more efficient. We now have our first poll question. Do you think telehealth will be a major part of your practice within the next two years? Please select yes or no. And the results, yes, approximately a third, and no, approximately two thirds. Thank you very much for responding. With that, I'd like to introduce you all to our company, Modernizing Medicine, and who we are. Our company is only 10 years old, founded by Dan Kane and Dr. Michael Sherlin. This is always a story I enjoy telling. Dan Kane was one of the founders of a company called Blackboard. And if any of you have kids, I do, my kids know all about Blackboard because it was the software they used in school. Dan was living in South Florida, needed a dermatologist, went to see Dr. Michael Sherling, who was a dermatologist in South Florida, and during the examination, they started a company. That was 10 years ago. Since then, our company has had over $300 million in total investment, but Dan and Michael are still the principal shareholders. We're at approximately 750 employees, and our main corporate headquarters is in Boca Raton. Although I have to tell you, our entire campus is empty because all employees have been working from home since the middle of March. ModMed Ophthalmology is one of the types of providers that we take care of. It was launched a few years after. We currently have 2,000 practices and over 6,000 providers on our platform that we're going to show you today. There's an independent testing institute for electronic medical records called Blackbook, and our software has been number one for the last four years in a row, including 2020. One of the features of our company is that we have 20 physicians who help to make this product better. As you can see on this slide, there are actually five ophthalmologists. I'm the bald guy in the middle, but the other gentlemen work with us and continue to practice medicine. In addition, they write code. When we need to add content to our software, we have physicians who directly touch the product. That's very unique in this space. As a platform, we've got four major areas that we focus on. The first is that this is a native cloud application, similar to Amazon. In fact, it's hosted in Amazon Web Services. It is in the cloud, and because it's a native cloud application, we have lots of flexibility in programming and delivery of software to our clients. In addition, it's mobile, touch-based. The main way that you enter data in our software is through a native application on an iPad. You are either touching the iPad or talking to the iPad. We also include payments, and you'll hear about that today from Celine. This is another unique feature of our software. And last, our data, since it's structured data in the cloud, that data can be delivered to medical practices to help you make better decisions. We have a whole analytics package that even a single doctor practice can open up and slice and dice their personal data to see how they take care of patients. That's an incredibly powerful feature. Again, these are very specific ways we're different. We are specialty specific. Dr. 
specialty specific in that dermatologists have a dermatologist EMMA, ophthalmologists have an ophthalmology EMMA. EMMA stands for Electronic Medical Assistant. This is cloud-based, touch-based, intelligent, and adaptive. The system actually learns as you use it and gives you information based on what types of things you do more routinely. Ophthalmology is actually a suite of products. You can see in the bottom a photograph of our electronic medical record, Emma, and as you see, blue eyes and a fundus drawing, it's very colorful. As I mentioned, it runs natively on an iPad, but you can also run it in a browser. So existing computers that you have work just fine. We also have apps for both iPhone and Android, both for doctors and for patients. And we're going to talk a little bit about the patient functions during the webinar today. With that, I'd like to introduce Chris Ann, who is our Vice President of Product Management, who's going to talk more about our contactless experience. Thank you, Dr. Rivers. Next slide, please. With the introduction of COVID, we're certainly looking at a new normal in practice workflow. I'd like to take this opportunity to walk you through the new patient journey. Next slide, please. Next slide. Before the visit, so practices are using many different components of communication successfully with their patients. One area is self-scheduling. With the introduction of virtual visits, practices are adding virtual appointments as an option for patient self-scheduling to ensure a continuity of care continues. Self-scheduling will reduce phone volume for your front office staff and provide your patients the convenience of scheduling appointments on their own at their convenience. On-demand messaging is another area where we're seeing an increase um, in usage. Practices are using on-demand messaging to notify large groups of patients of information pertinent to their practice, such as changes in office hours, office locations opening, and protocols specifically for patients to access their practice. Lastly, appointment reminders. Appointment reminder messages are common in the practice workspace. We are seeing appointment reminder messaging being retold to provide specific instructions for patient arrival, such as indicating that patient is to stay in the car and notify the practice via phone or text, or also retooling the message to indicate COVID symptoms um, related in questions to prompt if the office visit is appropriate or if the patient should consider rescheduling. Next slide, please. Engagement, engaging your patients pre-visit is critical. Through access with our web portal, patients are encouraged to access the portal to update their clinical history, medical uh, medications, pharmacy information, as well as upload images of their insurance and ID card. This updated information will save your staff time, allowing your staff to move from a point of data entry to data verification. From a mobile portal perspective, we are enhancing our mobile portal to provide a better patient mobile experience. Next slide, please. Patients will be able to remotely check in for their appointment, validate demographic and insurance information, and pay copays prior to being seen in the office. Next slide. In addition, via My Health within the mobile portal, patients will be able to review and add medications and pharmacies, request refills, update allergies, update medical, ocular, family, and social history, as well as review lab results. Next slide, please. Next slide. In the parking lot, formerly known as your waiting room, we have seen practices employ tools as where their patients can respond to an appointment reminder where in the parking lot to alert that they've arrived at the office. Upon arrival, the front office staff utilizing secure messaging contacts the patient, acknowledges their arrival, 
and then notifies the back office via office flow that the patient has arrived. The back office using call buttons within the solution then notifies the front office that they're ready for the patient to come into the office. The front office then uses secure messaging to alert the patient it's safe to come in, all with the focus of protecting both our staff and our patients from risk. Next slide, please. As you can see on this slide, the office flow reflects patient location with the easy access to the call button to alert staff that they, to alert front office staff that they are ready to see the patient. Next slide, please. During this time of post-visit, it's important to focus on continuity of care and revenue cycle normalization. From a recall perspective, it's important for practices to capture recall return dates for both virtual and in-office visits to ensure they're not losing patients that will be due for upcoming follow-up. The ModMed payment items displayed below will be covered during Celine's portion of the presentation. Next slide, please. Telehealth has become a cornerstone for practices during COVID by allowing providers to reach vulnerable patient populations conveniently while minimizing the risk of exposure to patients and staff. The Modernizing Medicine solution offers a seamless experience for both providers and patients and is available for use on the web, iOS, and Android platforms. Next slide, please. Managing your practice's revenue cycle during these times can be trying. Our boost services go beyond basic claim processing. This high-touch, ophthalmology-specific billing and collection service includes appointment reminders, eligibility checks, answering patient billing questions, and much more. With our experienced team handling your revenue cycle, your practice can focus on doing what it does best, treating patients. At this point, I'd like to now introduce Celine Kaiser, our Vice President of Payments and Commerce. Thank you, Chris. Um, so what is ModMedPay? Um, ModMedPay is a modernizing medicine payment processing solution that enables your practices to collect electronic payments such as credit card, debit card, and ACH from your patients. So we created our own payment solution to support practices to be more efficient and to offer a better patient experience when it comes to payment. Our main goals are to improve the operational efficiency. Um, could you go back to the previous page, please? Um, by one, uh, having all payment related data in one system so that you do not have to connect to a different application to view your payment transaction, your funding information, your merchant statement, and two, by integrating payment from any acceptance channels to practice management, meaning that if a patient pays online or in the practice or via his mobile phone, the payment data are automatically available in practice management for your staff to allocate. The second goal uh, is really to improve the financial efficiency of a practice by helping reducing the cycles to pay and therefore the aging AR. So we put in place tools and solutions for the practices to collect faster um, such as electronic balance messaging, um, electronic balance reminders, and as well a set of online payment options. And last but not least, our last goal was really to provide an enhanced patient experience by offering easy and multiple ways for the patient to pay. Today, all of us are used as a consumer to uh, use your wallet, for example, Apple Pay or Google Pay, and tab on those payment terminals when you go and pay at your grocery shop. We are used to use the same wallet to pay in-app by using our thumbprint. Uh, and we are as well used to go online just to enter our credit card on a website. So the patient digital experience is really key for us. Um, so how does it look like? Next page. Uh, so this is uh, how we manage today payment in practice. So we uh, accept HSFSA cards, chip cards, contactless like Apple Pay and Google Pay via the payment terminal you can see on the right side of the picture. Uh, but as well, um, if your billing practice and staff, for example, is managing um, payment via phone when the patient is calling your, your billing uh, team, the, the staff can manually enter a credit card or a debit card on an ACH in practice management. Next page. 
we as well enable uh, you and our practices to collect payments from our kiosk. So our kiosk is iPad based, as you can see on that picture, and Dr. Rivers mentioned that. Uh, at the time of checking, the patient is going to get this kiosk device uh, to validate their demographics, uh, validate which pharmacy they want to use, um, the medication allergy they have, and at the end of the flow, they have the ability to pay um, their copay. And they can either pay their copay by entering a new credit card, or they can as well use their card on file if they give you consent to store their card on file. On top of that, as Chris mentioned previously, we have um, our mobile intake experience post coming, uh, before coming to the practice physically, where the patient can, from their mobile phone, check in and as well pay their copay uh, to support a touchless experience in the practice given the current situation with COVID. Next page. So it's usually pretty easy to collect payment uh, when the patient is in your practice. Where it's more challenging is to do collection uh, post-insurance adjudication uh, where there is an open balance uh, for the patient. And here we have a set of different tools and solutions to make sure we can help our practices to reduce their cycle to pay. The first one here is a quick pay page. Um, so you all have a website, I'm pretty sure, and uh, a lot of, of providers today have an option to pay my bill on their, on their practice website. Uh, so this is our quick pay page behind that pay my bill link. Um, though the patient can go to your website, pay their bill, this uh, website URL, so link, is as well uh, printed on the patient bill so that when the patient receives their statement and their bill, they can say, hey, you can go here to pay my bill and they can go to that same page. Next, next slide. Another way to collect uh, open balance after insurance and education is really uh, to use our patient portal. And here again, in the idea of supporting an efficient way to collect payment, we put in place a process which is that as soon as the patient statement is issued, the patient receive an email notification letting them know that they have a billing statement uh, available with the URL. And when they click on the URL on the next page, you're going to see how they are going to be able to enter their credit card. So they will be able to see all of their open statements and if they are paid or past you, in this example, all of them are past you. And they have, make a pay, they have the make a payment option available. And here they can pay for their full remaining balance or partial balance. And they can do that by either entering a new credit card on that web page or by using again a card on file uh, if they previously agree uh, and give you consent to start the card on file for them. On the next page, you're going to see another way to uh, uh, be efficient from a financial standpoint with the option uh, text to pay. So text to pay is the same principle. If you have an open balance for a patient, for example, for 30 days, um, we have the ability to send a balance reminder via text message to the patient, uh, letting them know, hey, for Dr. XYZ, you have an open balance of $50. Please click here to pay and the patient is going to be redirected to a mobile compatible page where they can again enter the amount and their credit card to uh, pay for the open balance. Next page. Uh, we have as well uh, the ability to support payment plan and automate the payment processing for payment plans. So today with the situation uh, with COVID, we see that uh, some of the patients have financial difficulty to pay for their open balance in one time. And they're asking practices to support a payment plan uh, for them so that they have the ability to spread their open balance over a few weeks or a few months. And our practice management software enable the practice to enter the payment plan as it was agreed previously between the practice and the patient and to automate the, the payment processing for that. So we support here different way to set up a payment plan. It could be, you know, uh, you owe me 500 bucks and I want you to pay $100 every month or you owe me $500, but uh, I want you to have it paid by the end of August and you need to to manage that with a weekly payment. So the whole logic is here and then we support and we digitalize the, the 
payment consent uh, with the patient. So if you go to the next page, once your practice and staff created the payment plan, uh, we automatically send an email to the patient so that they can approve uh, the recurring payment. And it's important to know that recurring payment is really well ruled by Visa and MasterCard and the card brands. There is a lot of uh, regulation around it so that, uh, you know, we make sure that a business is not abusing the, the card order from a, from a recurring payment standpoint. So therefore, we send that email to the patient and the patient is going to be able to review the payment plan and the recurring payment authorization. And as part of that, they can see all the payment they have to do, the date, the frequency, the amount, and they can enter a credit card on file or we use one if they had one previously for that recurring payment. What will happen is that 10 days before the payment is scheduled, the patient will receive an email to let them know, hey, you have uh, a payment plan, a recurring payment coming up in 10 days. This is the amount. You have the ability to opt out if you decide so. And again, that's per Visa uh, and MasterCard rules. Uh, and then after the 10 days, automatically our system is going to take the payment uh, as per the payment plan created and approved by the patient. And I need to mention that this is currently in beta phase. Uh, and last but not least, uh, I was mentioning that we're really looking to improve the operational efficiency of a practice. So what we've done is that we embed into our practice management the payment reporting you usually have to access through a third party application. So here you can see your key metrics, uh, what is the gross payment I process today, the refund, uh, and then you can have access to the transaction details, um, the funding information, so how much money do we put to your bank account, uh, and the merchant statement. And again, all of that is part uh, uh, of our practice management software. So with that, I think I'm gonna uh, turn it back to Dr. Rivers. Thank you, Celine, very much. And we have another poll question. What solution would you be interested in learning more about? Please check as many as you are interested. Great, thank you all very much. And with that, I'd like to open up to questions. And we have several teed up already, and I hope if you have questions, you'll check the question mark on your screen and ask additional questions. The first question is to Celine. Um, I already have a payment processor. How hard is it to switch to ModMed Pay? It's a good question, Dr. Rivers. Uh, so I would say the process is pretty seamless. Uh, when you are a business accepting credit cards, you need to go through this underwriting uh, process. Uh, and this is a banking role with the Know Your Customer KYC. Uh, so we will ask you to complete what we call a merchant application, providing uh, information about your practice, about your ownership structure and we will underwrite uh, your merchant account, your tax ID. Uh, once this is done, uh, I will say that within two weeks, uh, we can uh, get you live, uh, making sure you receive your payment terminals to accept a terminal payment in the practice, but as well helping you to activate the patient portal, our quick pay page, our text to pay. Thank you. Next question is for Chris. Could you talk more about the remote scheduling function in practice management? Absolutely. So we have two manners of uh, remote scheduling functionality. One is access via a patient portal, a link within the portal that the patient can access and be directed to the self-scheduling solution. Um, in addition to that, uh, 
we have mechanisms to allow for a link off of the practices website for ease of convenience. The remote scheduling um, capabilities can be set up and configured to be specific to providers, specific appointment types, so that you can really hone in on which patients you want to have the ability to self-schedule. An example of this may be a practice that would like their patients to schedule follow-ups, but not necessarily new patient appointments. Um, how this works, the patient goes in, they identify the provider they'd like to see. Location can be optional if they're at multiple locations. And it brings forth real time the available appointments for the patient. Um, from a practice perspective, practices have two options. One, they can have the appointments automatically book on their schedule within practice management or they can have these appointment requests go into a queue. It does hold the appointment on the schedule, but internal staff would approve the appointments uh, moving forward. Different requirements for different practices, so we work to accommodate both use cases. Thank you, Chris Ann. Thank you very much. The next question is for me. Uh, can patients add clinical information remotely? And the answer is yes. Um, as you've seen from the slides, we have a native app for Android or our iOS, your iPhone, which is called Pocket Patient. And patients have access to the scheduling function, for instance, or for payments, but they can also add clinical information. So as an example, if you'd like to tell patients the day before an exam that they should go adjust their list of medications or their review of systems, they can do that from the phone as well as from the patient portal on a computer. The next question is back to Celine. Can patients use an iPhone to pay at checkout without a, without a signature? And, and the, I think the question is really related to the fact that you'd like patients to be able to exit the office without touching anything. In, in mm -hmm. the medical office, you have to clean everything off. So can they just do a remote payment with the iPhone at the end of the visit? Yeah, so they can tap. So what we call tap on the payment terminal, uh, you know, the one that usually you insert or swipe a card on. If you have a Google phone or a Samsung phone or an iPod phone, depending on the one you use, you can tap there and that's called contactless payment. So that's available at time of checking, at the time of checkout. Uh, and then keep in mind with our pocket patient uh, mobile intake, they will be able to uh, pay the copay before entering the, the practice. Excellent. Again, the, the challenge now is that anything that's touched needs to be cleaned. So the less things that we touch, the better when we're in the doctor's office. Yeah. Chris, I have the next question for you. I have an existing reminder system that's on our existing practice management software. Is your system added or is it built in and what advantage is that? That's a great question. Um, we've worked really hard to have a seamless integration with our appointment reminder system. So it's an all-in-one solution. And through this seamless integration, it's really afforded us some additional functionality that you may not see in your existing practice management system. One example is we've built in an appointment, um, an appointment queue for management of appointments. So we have practices that will allow their patients to request to reschedule or cancel an appointment. And within this queue, when the statuses are showing, the staff can immediately go into that queue, reschedule directly from there. So it's really a work assignment as a front office staff member. I go in, I log into the queue and see how many appointments need rescheduled or cancels that require follow-up. I have all the information from a single screen, patient contact numbers, et cetera. And when I get that patient on the line, I do have the ability to reschedule directly from that queue. So we try to make it as simplistic as possible. And our appointment reminder solution um, is really quite expansive. So the appointment reminders are your standard appointment reminder communication methods. 
phone, email, and text. Um, the reminder is sent out X number of days prior to the appointment as configured by the practice. And then there's a reminder sent the day of the appointment just to ensure that the patient is, is reminded and doesn't lose track of that appointment if the initial reminder is sent out several days in advance. In addition to the appointment reminder functionality comes what we call the on-demand messaging, which I mentioned earlier. And many of our practices, especially those up in the up in the north um, are experiencing inclement weather during the winter and if they have office closures and so forth they can very quickly have a message sent out to their patients that are on the schedule to cancel those appointments and redirect how those um, where the patients are to call to reschedule. One of my favorite conversations was with a client and she was based out of Knoxville, Tennessee and she was able to use her iPad. They had an ice storm and from her from her bedroom location. She woke up in the morning, watched the news, was able to put in a message and redirect to have cancellation notices sent out to the patients that were scheduled. And within minutes, the phone calls were going to their call center to reschedule those appointments. So it was really a great advantage. Another piece that comes with the appointment reminder um, service are recall reminders. And that's something I touched upon um, from a post-visit activity. What we're seeing with practices, patients that are coming into the office, they're certainly eager to leave the office wanting to keep their social distance between patients, and they may not be able to schedule a follow-up appointment at that time. So it's really critical to capture when that patient is due to come back. And based on the integration we have in the system, these recall messages can be sent out to those patients um, ahead of time to save your staff from calling to encourage them to make appointments with the office. And then lastly, no-show notifications. Um, we do have, uh, with this integration, that 48 hours post a scheduled date of bus uh, 48 business hours post a scheduled date of service. The system will send out reminders to your patients that did not show up, encouraging them to uh, contact the office for follow-up. So we really look at ways to bring automation to reduce the number of manual touches your front office staff will need to do from a patient management standpoint and really from a recall perspective, looking at that continuity of care and ensuring that those high-risk patients that should have follow-up are coming back into the office. And the recall queue that we have in our system is directly um, integrated with our scheduling system so that when you're scheduling, you can see if a patient has a recall that's due and you can link that appointment to the recall. And then if that patient would cancel or no-show, that recall would go back to the queue as unsatisfied. So really is a great check and balance for your practice where I've seen many practices using Excel spreadsheets and very manual process to re-engage with their patients. Excellent, thank you. Celine, next question. Can I see a report on staff collections by office if I use MyMedPay? And I think reading between the lines, if I'm a practice manager, I want to see how patients are paying in different offices and see how which staff are doing a good job of collecting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so because we integrated our payment product to our practice management, we have the ability to combine payment data with patient data with staff data. So our transaction reporting gives you a, a a view of um, the payment transaction itself for which patient and link back to the MRN we have in our practice management software and by who was taken the payment uh, in the practice if it was a staff payment. So again, staff payment could be manually keying or could be triggered through the payment terminal. Um, so you will be able to really have that view by staff members. We work as well with batch in our practice management software, so you can even uh, filter by those batch, by staff, and we can filter as well by what I call the acceptance channels. Was it a manual key transaction by the staff? Was it a terminal payment? Was it a portal payment, a quick pay payment? Was it a kiosk payment? So we really give that overview of how the payment was taken, for who, which patient, and by whom, and through which batch, if you are using batch in your practice. Excellent, that's a, that's a great audit trail. 
and I would think that would be extremely helpful to the practice manager who's mm -hmm. trying to understand. Go... Sorry. No, please. Dr. Evers was asking as well about the location. So if you have a practice with, you know, let's say five, 10, 15 locations, uh, you can as well filter by location. So you have the ability to do, um, to look at your entire business or really look at each location individually or a few locations at the same time. Wonderful, thank you. The next question is for me again. Does telehealth work on a computer or a phone? And the answer is we have a fully integrated telemedicine package. Um, it can work on a computer for the patient or a phone for the patient. Uh, it is HIPAA compliant. It's a video chat. In fact, it's a three-way video chat. So our clients like our telemedicine solution because the patient, a technician, and the physician can all be on the video chat at the same time. So as an example, the technician may start the telemedicine visit with the patient, take a history just like they were in the office, and then the doctor joins, talks to the patient, could do a video examination if necessary or, or if they're interested, and then the doctor could jump off the call and the technician can stay on the call and make sure the patient understands what the next steps are, help them with their appointment. So it's a very full featured solution. The next question is for Chris. Can I search for patients that want to reschedule appointments or do they choose a new time slot on their own? So for, um, for rescheduling an appointment, if a patient is calling in, I can, pull up, I can search for that patient's appointment and reschedule directly from that appointment. And what that allows for is history within the system. So if you have a patient that um, repetitively reschedules or repetitively cancels, it helps you guide that patient if perhaps another day is available. The other functionality I think that's important to raise is what we refer to as waitlist functionality. And in the system, you have the ability to add patients to a waitlist, either at time of scheduling or independent of a waitlist. And when we say waitlist, what we're saying is if I call in for an appointment and the first appointment is 30 days and I make the request, hey, if you get a cancellation, I'd really like to get in there sooner, I can indicate to be put on the waitlist. Or if scheduled templates aren't built out far enough in advance, you could add a patient to the wait list. What happens with that functionality from an automation standpoint is when an appointment is canceled in the system, your staff's canceling an appointment, the wait list will come up and prompt and give them the next three patients that would fit the criteria for that appointment with the information to contact the, uh, the patient. And what it will do is when your staff's contacting that patient, it will actually hold that spot so others aren't scheduling that appointment. Um, the wait list can also be worked from a manual process as well. Say one of your physicians open up a day on their schedule, um, you can you utilize the wait list to fill those appointment slots. Great, thank you. Uh, my discussion of telemedicine generated a question. During the telemedicine appointment, can the doctor review testing on screen while on video? And the answer is yes. The way our system works is that it's built in to the EHR. So I, as a provider, they actually start the video chat from within the patient's chart. So the patient's chart is open. They're able to document at the same time they're talking to the patient and still have a video chat simultaneously. And then the information such as tests, such as an OCT or a visual field that's attached to the patient's chart is part of the medical record as well and can be shared, that information can be shared with the patient. So we tried to replicate the actual physical examination with our telemedicine video system as much as we possibly could. Great question. 
Next question is for Celine. Celine, how do you charge medical practices for using ModMed Pay? So we charge ModMed Pay uh, quite similar to any merchant services uh, solution. There is um, a percentage of the transaction that is uh, the, the price of ModMed Pay. So we call that a flat rate. I'm sure everyone is familiar with you know, I think Square is at 3.5% if you if you process with Square. So we have a similar model where it's a percentage of the transaction and a transaction fee. Great. Uh, the next question. I have an ambulatory surgery center. Can I use your software there also? And do these features work in the ASC? Um, Chris, why don't you talk about the PM side and I'll talk about the EHR side. Yeah, absolutely. So from a practice management standpoint, our system does support facility billing. So if you have ownership in an ASC, we can support the billing associated with that, as well as um, anesthesia and pathology billing, whether it's done out of your profess professional tax ID or facility. The appointment reminder functionality, recall reminder functionality is all integrated and tied within our practice management system, so that would uh, that would be available. Self-scheduling could be utilized, however, we don't see this as a large use case because um, many individuals that are scheduling for procedures have to be pre-certified or have particular workup um, associated with it. So it's not to say it can't be done, it just depends on specific use case I I have to say as a as 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 a doctor who used to pre perform surgery I I would be really challenged if my patients could schedule their own surgery that would really bother me <laughs> I agree <laughs> <laughs> now uh, we also have software to uh, document in the ASC um, that is called modbed ASC um, so yes, we do support an ASC at all levels, um, and it is a, a very integrated part of our platform. Um, Celine, do you allow keeping a credit card or a bank account on file? that patients can use to pay bills, or do they have to enter their payment information every time? So we offer both options. Um, you can collect a new method of payment for every patient visits. Um, as I mentioned previously, if you want to work with a payment plan and enable recurring payment, we enable uh, the card on file uh, storage as such. Uh, and you can do that for any transaction. The important item that you have to keep in mind is that card on file has a lot of rules, uh, especially from Visa uh, and MasterCard about what to do with a card on file, how do you want to use it, and you need to get the patient consent in order to store a card on file. Uh, the main risk for you if you use a card on file without a patient consent is the risk of what we call chargeback. So your patient is going to call his bank and say, hey, I did not agree on that payment. I don't know what it is for. Please charge this back. I'm disputing the payment. And then as a merchant, as a business accepting credit card, you are liable for that chargeback. And you have to work with us or with your current payment provider to dispute that charge back to try to get back the the, the amount. So card on file is available. We uh, have it by default when you do a payment plan. You can use it um, through our kiosk, through our um, you know our patient portal. We just need to make sure that the patient gave you consent to store and use the card on file for future payment. Excellent, thank you. Um, we've got a few more questions that are coming in. Um, another ASC question. Is there a way to transfer or extract surgical planning information for use in the external ASC? And the answer is absolutely. Um, there is cataract surgery planning that's done in the clinic, and that information gets transferred into the software in the ASC. 
so the nurses, for example, know which lenses to pick. Um, and scheduling is the same schedule because our practice management works in both the ASC and in the uh, in the clinic. So the surgical scheduler in the clinic has full access to the surgical schedule in the ASC. Um, another question for Celine. Um, no, that's not. It's been asked. Let's see. I think I have one more question. Does your software have a contact management system for sales teams? And the answer is yes. Um, CRM or client relationship management. We have some functionality that is built in. We also have partners uh, that have more robust client relationship management and both of those are options uh, with our with our system and with that i'm going to say thank you very much to chris ann and celine for joining me on today's webinar and to chad for hosting us today thank you all very much thank you everyone we will uh, we'll see you next month but we wish everybody all the best um, as we do enter this this new norm, and so we appreciate the uh, our group today for their all the information they've shared because the reality is we are in a new reality and things have changed and and it's a little bit of that who moved my cheese right so the cheese has moved let's go find it let's let's work through this and I and I love that modernizing medicine um, is a great partner of ours they have so many solutions to help you be better at what you do. So thanks to, to uh, Dr. Rivers, Chris Ann, and Celine and the entire team there. So we look forward to, uh, to seeing you again next month. Thanks everyone, have a great day.